when people talk or think about Satan, I think the, probably the most common image that might come up in people's minds is a red guy with horns or a black guy with horns and a pitchfork, you know, poking people and, and standing at, at a fiery place or something like he's, he's the king of hell or something. And that's just not the truth at all. That is not who Satan is. Now, if you saw someone that was black with horns and wings and, 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 and looking at poking people with a pitchfork, you'd probably be like, yeah, I'm going to stay away from that guy. I'm not going to listen to anything he has to say, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. That would be very overt into just saying like, yeah. I mean, if you saw anybody dressed like that, you'd be like, okay, this guy's a weirdo. I'm not, <laughs> not going to have anything to do with him. Satan is way more subtle than that, and that is not how he appears at all. And this is why it's so important to understand who Satan is because he's going to try to appear to you as a really good person, a really good guy, someone who's maybe just a little bit misunderstood. This is who Satan is. We're going to see some description of what the Bible gives us of who Satan is. I referenced Ezekiel 28 last week, and you'll notice here it's talking to, it's, it's preaching to the king of Tyre, Tyrus is what it says in Ezekiel 28. You can see there in the first couple verses, it says, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am, excuse me, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that they can hide from thee. And it goes on and on. We're going to jump ahead a little bit in this chapter. But, but the point I was trying to make, and I, and I brought this up last week, is that especially in Ezekiel and in other books of the Bible, there's um, preaching against different kings and different kingdoms, different places of God's judgment coming. And what we see here is, yes, there's a message being given to the king or the prince of Tyre, of Tyrus, but this is also referring to the spiritual wickedness in high places that is behind the king, the one who's actually kind of swaying the king and influencing the king, the, the physical king, the, the, the man, the king of Tyre. But behind that is Satan. We're going to see that here in verse number 12, that it's going to be clearly referring to Satan and not referring to just the man that's the king. Verse number 12 says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So take note of that, perfect in beauty. Verse 13, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, right away, we know that after Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, that the Garden of Eden was sealed and there's angels guarding it and you know, no one's gone into the Garden of Eden since then. This is obviously not talking about the physical king of Tyre anymore that is ruling at, that, at the time that Ezekiel is preaching you know, to give this message to. This is referring to Satan. It says, Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So we're, as we read further, you're going to see even more clearly that this is talking about Satan. But what we're looking at, we're getting a picture of here is a creature who is perfect in beauty. Very, very beautiful. Not only beautiful, it's talking about all these beautiful stones, diamonds, onyx, you know, this, this covering that's just or, or, or ornamented or, you know, um, dressed up in just in beauty. And it says the workmanship of thy tabrets and thy pipes. So it's talking about the, Satan's voice being very pleasant, musical. Something that's going to be appealing to hear, not only just to look upon, but to hear. There are going to be things that, that are going to appeal to people. Look at verse number 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Okay, now we're talking about an angel, a cherub. That's one of God's creations. That's what Satan is. He's an anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. 
Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. So Satan was this, was this anointed cherub, very beautiful creature, very musical voice, great to look on, and was perfect until iniquity was found in him. 